Hi friends, welcome to Abhi Tutorials. Welcome to the second part of the lesson Variables and Types. In this lesson, we will see a few more variable types. The first step we are going to see in this lesson is the tuple. Tuple is nothing but an array of items enclosed within round brackets. Tuples are similar to lists where you can add items of same type as displayed in variables marks or fruits. Or you can have a tuple with different item types as in the variable A. Tuples are immutable, which means once you create a tuple, you cannot change its contents. Similar to a list, you can access individual items in a tuple using the index number. Index numbers start from zero and continuous till the total number of items in the tuple. Tuple also supports negative numbering, which starts as minus one from the last item and continuous to the first item. Accessing tuple items are similar to how you access list items. The example given here will show you how to access tuple items. Let's now go back to the Python console to create a sample tuple. Today, we will make use of the Python idle to run our programs. When you install Python, you will also get an application by name idle. To open the same, click on the start menu and type idle. Open the same by clicking on it. You will be able to see a console as displayed here. This console is also known as Python shell. And we will be typing all of our commands for this lesson in the Python shell. I have created a new tuple named A here with some sample content. Type len of A to get its length. Type A square bracket of 1 to get the item in index 1. To get specific items, I can use the colon operator. As you can see, it operates in the same as it worked for a list. Let's now try to modify the second list item by typing a of 2 equal to learn as displayed here. Press enter to see what happens. As expected, we received an error message. This is because python tuples are immutable and any attempt to modify the same will result in an error. Let's now try to use the append function to add an item to the end of the list. Even this operation fails due to the same reason since tuple is immutable. Similarly, any operation you try to apply on a tuple that tries to change its value will fail. In case, if you need to modify a tuple, then you will have to convert the tuple to a list using the list of function as shown here. Then you make the necessary modification to the list. Here I am appending some string to the list b. Finally, Convert the list to a tuple using the tuple function as highlighted here. As you can see the tuple now has the updated items. The next step we are going to see is the range. The syntax for creating the range variable is as given here. Here range is the function we use to create a variable of type range. As you can see the range variable can take up to three parameters. If the range function has only one parameter then the parameter indicates the end digit of the range. If the range function takes in two values, then the first value is considered as the start digit and the second value is considered as the end digit. The final syntax has an additional parameter which indicates the number of counts the range has to jump to get the subsequent item. Let's now get to an example. As given in the example here, range of 7 will give you the numbers from 0 to 6. Since the start digit is not specified, here the count starts from 0. Range 5,10 will give you numbers starting from 5 to 9. Range 5,50,10 will give you the numbers 5 to 45 in steps of 10. Let's now look the same in code. Let's now create a variable by name a and assign it to the range of 7. If I now type a and press enter, I will not be able to see the values stored within the range variable. Instead, it will be displayed as range of 0, 0,7. To display the content of the range variable, we will have to use a for loop. We will see more about loops in the forthcoming lessons. For now, we will see that how to access the items in the list. Type the for loop as displayed here and press enter twice. Highlighted here is the output of the loop execution which displays the items within the range variable. Let's now see the type of the variable a by using the type function. As you can see, the type is displayed as range. There is one more to view the content of range variable. For that, you will have to convert the range to a list or a tuple. And then you can either view the list or the tuple. Let's see an example for it as well. 
go to the python shell create a variable d and assign the value as list of a the list of a function will convert the range to a list press enter type d and press enter you should be able to see the items that are present in variable d now let's look into the dictionary variable the value for the dictionary variable is enclosed within a pair of curly braces and the dictionary can contain one or more key value pairs the keys are always string you also can have numeric values as keys but python automatically converts the numeric keys to strings you can enclose the keys either in single or double quotes the keys can have spaces in between them you can access the dictionary items by using the key names for example if you need to access the first name of the person variable then you will have to type person square bracket first name using which you can get the corresponding value for the respective key let's look at an example here as you can see here we have created a dictionary variable named person the dictionary has three values namely first name last name and age and correspondingly it has three values let's now try to access the individual items of the person variable to access individual items of the dictionary we use the variable name with the key name enclosed within a square bracket as displayed here given here is a simple example of a nested dictionary here we have an outer variable named student within student we have two sub dictionary items namely s1 and s2 within the sub dictionary items we have two keys called name and age to access the name from the item s1 you have to first access the s1 key of the student variable and then access the inner key name from s1 as highlighted here the next variable types we are going to see are the set and the frozen set the values for set is enclosed within a curly braces if the set variable is further enclosed within a rounded bracket then it becomes a frozen set set is mutable type whereas frozen set is immutable remember the rounded bracket from tuples immutability in frozen set is similar to the tuples there are certain differences in between the list tuple and set frozen set in a list or in a tuple values you add are placed in an order whereas in a set or in a frozen set the values will not be stored in the order you place them unlike list or tuple items stored in a set or a frozen set cannot be accessed using index also the duplicate items you add to the set or the frozen set will be removed automatically since we cannot access the set or the frozen set elements using the index number we have to use a loop to access the elements of a set or a frozen set let's now go to the python shell and see a demo i have created a new set named fruits now if i type the variable named fruits i get the set of items but i will not get the items in the order that i have specified let me now try to access an item using an index number i am trying to access the item present in index 1 when you press enter you will get an error as expected because the variable type set doesn't support index numbers same will be the case with frozen set as well you can access the item stored within a set using a for loop Let's see how to do that. As you can see, I have created a for loop to go through all items in a set. After the print statement, press enter twice, and you will be able to see the contents from the set. The same method can be used to access item from a frozen set as well. The final type of variables we are going to see are the bytes, byte array, and the memory view. First, let us look into the byte type. To create a byte object. you can prefix the character b to the starting portion of the string or you can make use of the bytes function when you use the bytes function make sure that you add an additional parameter for encoding byte strings are machine readable format and such formats are generally used to store data in the disk and in network transmissions similarly we have another function called byte array which is used to create an array of bytes the type of variable that will be created when you use this function is a byte array variable Finally we are going to look into the memory view type memory view variables can be created using the memory view function it allows python code to access the internal data of byte or byte array object without copying them the memory view is somewhat similar to a c pointer 
it just holds the reference to the actual data as a normal python programmer you may not use the memory view on a day to day basis but memory view can be helpful in case if you need to handle very large chunks of data as memory view doesn't need copying and you don't need to have an additional copy of big chunks of data there are certain functions that help you to get the data from the memory view variable let's now jump into the demo to see more about what we have discussed let's now create a new byte string called a by prefixing the character b in front of the string hello world type a and press enter you will be able to see a new byte string created let's now test the type of a using the type function as you can see the type of a is bytes let's now create a new memory view variable m1 using the function memory view and access the content of the byte a let's try to print the content of m1 as you can see the memory view is printed as displayed in the highlighted area let's now try to get the type of the variable m1 by issuing the type function the type of the variable m1 is memory view let's try to call the function to list which is available for memory view as you can see the content of the variable is displayed in numeric format the numeric format is nothing but the numbers corresponding to the characters in the string hello world let's try to validate it using the chr function which is used to convert numbers to characters as you can see the numbers correspond to the byte array we have stored in a we also have the hex function for memory view which is used to get the hexadecimal form of the data stored in the actual byte variable finally we have the two byte function which is used to get the data from the actual byte variable using the memory view variable that ends our lesson on the variables thanks for watching our video stay tuned and please like subscribe to our channel thank you